Uh, this is belt replacement <clears throat> on an 1198 engine. Um, mostly the same as the 749 I did previously. A um, couple little differences which I'll just run through. Um, so first put the belts on. The dot and the timing shaft pulleys lines up with the slot in the primary drive cover and got some white marks on the cam pulleys. Just setting them at top their, at their position. Uh, they were made before the belts came off last time. The vertical belt on. I've given all these rollers a good spin to make sure they're all okay. Once again, the vertical inlet cam has load on it. So we'll spin it around until it's about in the right place. And we can just manipulate it a little bit when we get there. And it needs to go around a little bit more. It's quite annoying. Might pull this adjuster off. And that'll give us a bit more length in our belt. You put the belt on there. Yeah, that mark's a bit off. That's where it needs to be. And I'll just show you the difference between this and the earlier engines that I alluded to and the other one. And that's the position of the T-shape in the end of the cam. On the 1198s, 8 Fry Devos, Street Fighters and all the later 1200 engines. Top dead centre, horizontal up firing, which is what this dot indicates, lined up here. All the camshafts have their slots pointing away from the cylinder. So again, the slots point this way and this way. That's the main, vari main variation. Um, and that's how you know ultimately that they're in the right place on these engines is that they just always point up. So another simple way to check where the cams are meant to be. To adjust the tensioners on these, they have two holes. And the later ones, like a Multistrata has three holes and the gap between the holes is different to the two hole ones. So I use a pair of pointing out of um, circlet pliers that have been um, had the ends cut off and it just makes them very easy. You can just put them in to the holes there and then you can adjust easily. It's much easier to do this outside the bike than inside the bike. Sometimes it gets a bit tight, but um, I'm not sure why they went to the two holes. Previously they had a 26 mil hex in there, um, which came from uh, all the tester stretters. The, Desmo Quattro's originally had a 22mm hex and then with the S4R, ST4S engines, they went to a 24mm hex. Not sure why they changed. Let's pop this belt on. Again, it is easier to pull the adjuster off if it's a bit tight. You don't need to go out of your way to make it hard for yourself. So you can pull it down, make sure the legs are all pointing straight out. So with that in mind, we'll just put a little bit of tension on the belts. when you sort of end up hitting into this oil cooler mount or a fairing mount. Right, for a start off. You're right for a start off. Put this engine's out of the bike. There's no oil in it. There's no oil cooler. So we can't turn it over until it gets oil pressure um, because it would make a huge mess. 
but first off, we'll turn it over with a crank turning tool and just turn it over once gently to make sure that nothing hits anything. Okay, so made it around once. Okay, so give it a, quite a few turns, sort of settles the belts down. Go back to top dead center, horizontal. And then I can check the belt tension. Uh, I'll try the Gates Carbon Drive app. Hundred and twenty-five hertz. So I'll back that off a little bit. Just aiming for hundred and ten. One hundred and ten. There, we'll turn it over though. Turn it over till we get the dot to about three o'clock here, which is vertical top dead center firing. And then we check the vertical belt. It's 90. So I'll put a little bit more on the vertical. Hmm, 93, but always turn it over once you've done that. I'll go around the other side of the bike, other side of the engine. Okay, it's pumping any oil out of the sump, <laughs> out through the oil cool hoses. If you are doing this with oil in the bike and you haven't got the rocker covers on, which I don't have here, I'm going to do the cam timer next, the rocker cover screw holes in here and in the centre here are open to the oil. So if you have them open, eventually it'll pour oil out of them and believe me, it just goes absolutely everywhere. Okay, that's 114 hertz on the horizontal. and 92 on the vertical. So leave the horizontal where it is because next time around it could be 100 hertz or 105 or something. So we'll just see what the variation is. We've got 100 hertz there. So I'll turn it over some more. Line the dot up. Back to the horizontal. 114 again. I might just take a touch over. I normally wouldn't worry too much about anything under 115. 104 now it says. And the vertical is 108, which is nice. So again, horizontal check. 113, I might do that again when I touch the belt. 111, 111, which I'm not going to worry if we had 110 and 111, that's fine. Vertical top dead centre firing, 108.9, 
which is 107 now. Every time you flick it, it usually does drop tension a little bit. 107. So we'll torque these up and call them fine at that. You do need to hold the adjusters while you tighten them because it can roll them back a little bit. Let's put oil all over my hand off the core. Spin it over a few more times. Hundred and eight point seven. Hundred and eight point eight. Scarily coincidental. We'll try it one more round, see if it varies much. Hundred and thirteen point two. Hundred and twelve point five. Hundred eleven point two. Hundred and eight point six. So they do tend to vary around a similar range a little. I'm not going to get too worried about that. Um, so we can get a better look at the N-Track tuner this time around too. N-Track tuner, turn it sideways, you get a better view of the scale. Um, this is 100 hertz here, and it's about what we want to see. So we'll see what we get and see if it can hold the peak long enough, and I can get the camera to pick it up and show you what it actually looks like. You can see the peak. It's about a, at 110 hertz. Okay, so that's belts done. Now we're going to do the cam timing.